In this Webflow tutorial, I'll teach you how to make a flip box card effect in Webflow. So in this example website, HBSPCA, if we go to the missions page, we can see there's three tiles that says our mission, our vision, our values. And when you put your mouse over it, it then flips that box to show different information. So let's jump into Webflow. Okay, guys, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just add a grid. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a class of three column grid. And I'm going to go ahead and set the columns to three and the rows to two. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a flip box card effect in each of these specific grid items. So the anatomy of that flip box card is very, very simple. We need one specific card that wraps everything. Then we have a front card and then a back card. That's literally the anatomy. Let's go ahead and quickly build this in. I'm going to add a div block into my three column grid. I'll go ahead and give this a class of flip wrapper. And in this flip wrapper, I'll give it a width of 100%. And I'll just put a height so you guys can see it, maybe of 32 rems. That looks pretty cool. And for just tutorial sake, I'm going to go ahead and give this a background color. And this might not be applicable to what you guys are doing. But as always, my tutorial is here to guide you. And you can go ahead and edit whatever you want. Now that I have this flip wrapper, I'm going to go ahead and change the position from static to relative. And this allows me to enable Z index, which is stacking. The higher the Z index, the more it appears in front. But more importantly, we can put positions to be absolute. So they literally don't follow the convention styles of the box model. So right now I'm going to put relative. Then inside this flip wrapper, I'm going to go ahead and add a div block. And I'll give this a class of flip box item. And from here, I can change this position from static to absolute. And this is going to now listen to the most recent parent that is set to relative which was the flip underscore wrapper. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure the absolute is stretched to full. On top of this, I'm going to put the width as 100% and the height as 100%. And in this specific item, maybe I'll go ahead and change the background color to let's just say a light yellow. And you can see this is sitting on top or it's literally taking 100% of that card that we made, the parent card, the one that we will be animating. So from here, we can do whatever we want. Maybe in this case, I'll just put some padding and I'll just go ahead and put a heading three and I'll just call it, you know, creep, lol, can't even spell. And I'll go ahead and put a paragraph text. This is the front card, lol, all right? And you can put whatever content you want, you know? If you understand box model, you do you. Cool. Now with this done, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this flip box item. And you'll notice it's literally sitting on top of each other because they're both position absolute with a Z index of auto. So they, they share the exact same number. But with this duplicated one, I'm going to go and give it a combo class of back. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and change at the very bottom where it says transform and go ahead and hit plus. And I'm going to go ahead and hit rotate. And I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. You'll notice it kind of like flipped it. But more importantly, I'm going to hit this three dot icon next to the plus. And I'm going to go ahead and put back face visible to hidden. Now that just hides it. Now the crazy part is if we hit this flip underscore wrapper, so the main card, we can go ahead and put a transform and we can put rotate to 180 degrees. And you'll notice this is actually the back of the card. We just didn't change the information. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these and I'm going to perhaps replace this with the image of a creeper. So in this case, I'll go ahead and scroll down to background image. I'll hit plus. I'll choose my image of this creeper and I'll set it to cover and move it to the middle. No tile. Now that's done. I can go back to my flip underscore wrapper. So the main card go back into transform and then just reset that. And you'll notice that is what's happening. So we've now put the card as fixed width and height, and then we set it to relative and we put two more cards, a front and a back that sits within this card, both set to absolute. And one of them, the back card is actually transformed 180 degrees and the back face is hidden. So now if we go back into this main card wrapper, we can scroll down and hit transform. We can go ahead and hit rotate, move this to 180 degrees, and you'll notice it's showing the back now. And if I actually just like move my mouse, this is what we'll be doing. We'll be going from zero degrees into 180, and that's how it flips to the back. So let's go ahead and just put a hover effect right now. Go ahead and select flip underscore wrapper, hit interactions, we'll hit plus, we'll put mouse hover, we'll hit start animation, we'll hit plus, and we'll just call it flip creeper, LOL. And from here, we can go ahead and hit plus, we can go ahead and hit rotate and we can go ahead and change the y axis to 180 degrees. And obviously, we can play around with timing, etc. 
In this case, I want it to affect the class because I may be duplicating this multiple times and I'll hit save. And as always, we need to put hover out effect. So we'll start animation, we'll duplicate the creeper lol, and we'll just go ahead and just rename it to be out. And we'll go ahead and change the rotation back to zero. Now if we hit save and we preview the site, you'll notice if I put my mouse over it, we're almost there, but there's actually just this really crazy glitch. And that's because we actually applied the animation to flip underscore wrapper. So hopefully you can understand the reason why. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that specific trigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this div inside another div, and I'll just call it flip card trigger. And that's it. Now, if I go to interactions, I'll hit plus, mouse hover. I'll go ahead and just pull those animations that I've created, and I'll put the hover out, and I'll apply it to the class. And now if I preview the site, you'll notice it's working perfectly. So the reason why it wasn't working before, and I did this on purpose, is to test your box model skill, but essentially we're flipping the trigger. But now the trigger is actually just that box, so it doesn't have that weird glitch effect. And that's it. If we go ahead and just duplicate this in our grid, you'll notice we can rename this. And if we preview it, it all flips all three cards. So I made a mistake, this should affect the child only. So we can go ahead and go back into the trigger, go back into this specific trigger animations, and make sure that this is selected to be not all elements, but children only. And if you're having like struggles of like, what is a children, what is a sibling, what is an all element, I've made a tutorial specifically talking about the box model. So in this case, I want to apply it to children. I'll go ahead and select the out, and I'll also apply this to the children. That way the trigger works and only affects what's inside that box. So you can see, there we go. Keep in mind, if we have this flip effect, this clearly won't work on mobile devices because there is no hover effect on mobile devices. Although you can just press and hold on a mobile phone and it will flip. So this is a technically bad user experience. So that's something to keep in mind, but I hope you guys found this tutorial super helpful. My name is Derek Su. I aim to provide free Webflow tutorials in this channel. In fact, I've already made 80 plus tutorials. You can check out the playlist right here. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.